Welcome, friends. I'm Chris. I'm with Transformation Nation Yoga and Wellness. And what I have for you today is a 60-minute yin-yang yoga experience with an anatomical focus on the spinal column. What I recommend for props, I think you would be more comfortable if you had a yoga mat. Two blocks, but I would also recommend a bolster. Or if you don't have a bolster, like a, a full body pillow, something like that would work really well. Or a couple of couch cushions and up to two blankets. And let me have you start. I'm going to do a reading, so I'll stay seated. But where I'll ask you to start is on your back. So find any comfortable grounded position where your sacrum and your lower back feel really supportive. So you could do this on your back with the soles of your feet on the earth. You could do like a reclining bound angle pose where you bring the soles of your feet together, press the pinky edge blades of your feet into the earth and release your knees and your thighs down to blocks. If you choose this, you could have your hands basically anywhere that you want. You also have the option of extending the legs long, right? So whatever is going to be comfortable for you. And for this reading, I'm going to read just a snippet from chapter two of the Bhagavad Gita. And in this um, chapter, the teacher and mentor of our protagonist, Arjuna, responds to Arjuna's um, sense of his ethical dilemma. But again, this is just a single verse. You have a right to your actions, but never to your actions fruits. Act for your actions sake and do not be attached to inaction. And actually I lied, I'm gonna add a second verse. Self-possessed, resolute, act without any thoughts of results, open to success or failure. This equanimity is yoga. So I'll read these two verses again. You have a right to your actions, but never to your actions fruits. Act for the action's sake and do not be attached to inaction. Self-possessed, resolute, act without any thought of results, open to success or failure. This equanimity is yoga. Start to lengthen out your breath. So taking deeper inhales and more full and complete exhales. And check in with your body. Notice all the places where you feel sensation in the shape. So this could be the sense of the earth pressing back up into your body through your floor or through your mat, wherever you're coming into contact with it. If you chose a reclining bound angle pose, it might be a little tug at the hip flexors. Could be something to do with your skin, the temperature, the humidity of the air in your skin. Or it might have something to do with your breath. But wherever your sensation is most provocative, let this be your anchor to your present moment experience. Check in with your body. Ask yourself this question. What is it that you need from the practice today? And then three breaths to listen for some form of response. And then if you've got nothing but crickets in the response, friends, that's okay. Start to shift into a victorious breath, ujjayi breath. A light constriction at the base of your throat. Adding texture and an audible quality like an ocean wave to both your inhale and your exhale. And if you're in bound angle pose, place your hands on the outside of your thighs, draw your knees up to center, and then grab two blocks. When I ask you to lift up, I'd like you to place your blocks 
at the lowest width, short end to short end, under your lower back, giving yourself lots of support as you lower your weight down. And we will come back to this use of the blocks toward the end of the practice. But for now, start to put a bend in your right knee. Draw your right knee toward your right shoulder. Interlace both hands on the right shin. Now, left foot, you have the option of leaving the sole of that left foot right there on the earth. That might be very supportive of your low back. You also have the option of lengthening that left leg out long. Start to make some small circles with your right leg. And change the direction of the circles. Now come back to stillness, release your right shin, start to straighten through that right leg. What is more important to me here than a straight leg is the sole of the right foot parallel to the earth. So if you'll notice, I have a generous bend in my right knee, that's fine. Interlace your hands anywhere in the back of that right thigh. And apply a little bit of gentle pressure, drawing your right knee ever so slightly closer to your nose. And there may be no physical, actual physical movement at all here. That's okay. Release your right hand, but continue to hold and stabilize that right thigh with your left hand. Now take the webbing between your right thumb, right index finger, feed it into your right hip crease. And then use your left hand, start to draw that right leg across the center line of your body. So what we're going for here is a stretch on the IT band on the outside of the right thigh. But at the same time, since we're here, press your right hand in a diagonal motion. So forward toward the top edge of your mat, and down toward the earth. We're just trying to create a little bit of tractional force, a tractional effect in that right hip. Now gently start to guide the sole of your right foot back up so it's parallel with the ceiling. And then in your, in your next exhale, put a bend in your right knee. One more time, interlace both hands on that right shin. Give the right knee one last little gentle tug toward the right shoulder, and then release it down to the mat in front of your two blocks. Bend in your left leg, start to draw left knee to left shoulder. Interlace both hands on that left thigh, straighten your right leg. So the toes on that left foot are engaged, but not over engaged. So not to the point where you start to feel a lot of fatigue in the muscles in your feet or calf. So balancing two qualities, relaxed and alert. And that whole right leg, if you like, can go soft. Small circles with that left leg. And change the direction of your circles. Come back to stillness, release that left shin, start to straighten that left leg, sole of the left foot parallel to the ceiling, maybe a bend in the left knee, maybe even a generous bend. And then apply gentle pressure with the hands, guiding that left knee ever so slightly toward your nose. Release that left hand, right hand continues to stabilize behind that left thigh. Webbing between your left thumb and left index finger feed into your left hip crease. Use the right hand, draw your left heel across the center line of your body, maybe across your belly button. Press that left hand forward and down into that left hip crease.
release your left hand, start to guide the sole of your left foot so it's parallel with the ceiling again. Then on an exhale, interlace the hands on the left shin again, one last little gentle tug, left knee to left shoulder, and then release the soles of both feet to the earth, lift up, remove your blocks, and using good body mechanics, make your way into a quadruped position, tabletop, right? So for most bodies, good body mechanics is gonna look like rolling to the side and then pressing yourself up, right? So find a good stable base here. So maybe start with your hands, your wrists under your shoulders and your hips floating over your knees. But if you're getting compression in your wrist, know you can take your hands forward and change that angle to make it more favorable for you. Now we're gonna start with rhomboid push-up. Goal is arms will stay straight. In practice, if the elbows bend a little bit, it's just fine, it's just fine. But on an inhale, drop just your chest down toward the earth. Feel the space between your shoulder blades, close up tight. Back of the head is buoyant. So back of the head roughly in line with the back of the heart. And then as you exhale, press the back of your heart up toward the stars. And at the very top, if you like, release your chin to your chest. Inhale, release your chest down toward the earth. Back of the head becomes buoyant again. Exhale, puff the space between your shoulder blades skyward. Inhale, drop just your heart down toward the earth. Exhale, press the back of your heart up toward the heavens. And then come back into a neutral spine position. Shift your gaze forward. So I, I would not want you cranking aggressively in the back of the neck, but shift the gaze so it's four or five feet ahead of your mat. Inhale right here. Exhale, draw your chin to your chest and start to slowly sit your seat back towards your heels. Elbows stay shoulder width apart the whole time. Inhale, lift back up into tabletop. Leave the chin tucked in toward the chest until the very top of the movement and shift the gaze forward four or five feet in front of your mat. Exhale, chin to your chest, so seat to your heels. Inhale, lift yourself up. And the last 25% of the movement is when the chin starts to lift. And work through four more of these to the cadence of your own breath at your own pace. So when we transition next, I'm gonna change my orientation on my mat. It's just for demonstration purposes. And my preference would be as long as the orientation you have on your mat is working for you, I would prefer that you not change anything. All right, so after six full rounds and iterations, make your way back into a neutral spine position. Tuck your toes under your feet and then camel legs, draw the knees in together. Feet out wide, maybe full mount with the part. And then the left hand comes under your sternum, so right to the center of your mat, right hand at the base of your skull. So your whole right arm is parallel to the earth. Inhale, lengthen along your whole spinal column, tailbone to the crown of your head. Exhale, lift your right elbow up toward the heavens and stay right here or each inhale, release your elbow slightly out of the twist. Exhale, re-engage, lift the right elbow up toward the stars. If that feels good, Continue with a cycling movement to the cadence of your own breath. All right, make your way back into stillness. Release your right hand down to the mat. Right away, change sides. Right hand under your sternum. Left hand to the base of your skull. Inhale, squeeze knees and inner thighs together. Find length along the spine. Exhale, lift the left elbow up toward the heavens and stay right here or cycle to your own breath. All right, so we're starting to get closer to warming the body through sun salutation. When we do that, we're gonna start with a variation of sun salutations A that's pretty neck intensive. And we'll be using chair as the foundation, including forward folds over chair legs. 
So I'll explain that more when we get there, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a preview. Come back into stillness, release your left hand down to the mat, then bring both shoulders, hands rather, shoulder width apart, release your knees back to hip width apart. On an inhale, tuck your toes, exhale, press your hips up and back, find the first downward facing dog of our practice. Right, right away, the movement that warms your lower body, find that movement. Right, could look like pedaling out your feet or swaying your hips. Today, I'm going to choose to take the Achilles heel of one foot and use the webbing between the big toe and the second foot of the opposite foot to gently traction that opposite heel down. Come back into stillness. Let gravity drape the heels down toward the earth. They probably won't touch. That's okay. And if you are tight in your hamstrings and your low back, you should have a bend in your knees. All right? But flatten your palms out on the mat. Find a soft, long, supple shape for your neck. And can you draw your chest towards your thighs a little bit more? Can you also create a little bit more space and length between your wrists? in your hips, and then again between your hips and your ankles. When then inhale, bend your knees, look forward, exhale, take as many steps as you need, come up into the top edge of your mat to ragdoll, feet hip distance apart, whole belly resting on your thighs, maybe a big bend in the knees. Your choice with your arms, but not so much with your neck. Find a soft, long, supple shape for your neck here too. We're gonna to be engaging the neck a lot today. So when you have a chance to relax it, I would encourage you to do that. And also note through the engagement, choose a range of motion that feels healing and supportive. If you're taking the shape with your neck that you can't imagine doing longer than five years from now, I wouldn't do it. Release your feet down to the earth, hands down to the earth, heel toe your feet together. On an inhale, find a halfway lift, long straight spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, press down into your feet. Circle your arms all the way up over your head. Exhale, release your hands into heart center. Take a soft gaze at your fingertips, maybe set an intention for your practice. Then on your next inhale, lift your fingers up toward the stars. Lift your gaze, look at your hands, interlace your middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. Exhale right here. On an inhale, press down into your feet, grow out of your heart, the crown of your head, and your fingers. Exhale, drop your hands off to the right. Press your hips over to the left. So what can you do from here to create a little bit more space between the nail on that left index finger and the big toe edge blade of your left foot? So we'll talk later in the practice about the, the role of these side bends in low back care. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, we're gonna change sides. Drop your hands off to the left. Press your hips over to the right. Inhale, rise back up to center. Lift your gaze again, release your fingers. Exhale, sit back in the chair pose, Utkatasana. So it's the first chair, it may be a higher chair, but shift the weight into the heels. And then release your left hand to your lower back. Start to fold forward over chair legs. Fingers in your right hand sweeping down to the earth like you're reaching out of the shoulder socket. Shift your gaze powerfully to the left. And then as you inhale, lead with that right arm. Gaze comes back to center, come back in the chair. Exhale, change sides, right hand to the low back, left hand sweeps out of the shoulder socket for the earth, powerful gaze to the right. Inhale, lift back up at the chair. Exhale, find a forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, step back into high plank, a high push up position. Inhale right here, draw your belly button to your spine. Exhale, tap your knees down to the earth. Elbows, graze the ribs the whole right down, come down to your belly. First heart opener will be Sphinx pose. Slide your hands forward. Put your shoulders over your elbows. 
right? Soften everything in the center of your body. So soften the belly, soften the back. Legs are engaged by pressing the shoelace parts of your feet into the earth. Arms engaged by drawing the elbows back towards your waist. So in my own personal practice, what I'm looking for in this pose are really two things. One is creating more space and length between my pubic bone and my sternum, which you can't do with a firm belly. You have to soften it up. But the other thing I'm looking for is to really lean into the pulling sensation of dragging the elbows back toward my waist. And I get a little light decompression in the lower back, the lumbar spine. It feels amazing for me. Inhale. Exhale, release your heart down to the earth. Hands under your shoulders. Press up and back to downward facing dog. On an inhale, bend your knees, look forward, exhale, walk or step to the top edge of your mat. Inhale for a halfway left. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, press down into your feet, rise, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands into your heart center. Inhale, sweep your fingers up toward the stars. Exhale, sit back into chair pose. Ooh, katasana. Inhale right here. Exhale, right hand to the low back, left hand sweeps to the earth, gaze is to the right. Inhale, lead with that left arm, gaze comes back to center, chair pose, inhale and chair. Exhale, change side, left hand to the low back, right hand sweeps to the earth, gaze to the left. Inhale, rise into your chair. Exhale, find a forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Inhale and high plank. Exhale, knees up or down, lower all the way down to your belly. And then on an inhale, open your heart. You can go back to Sphinx, or you could leave the hands under the shoulders. Pull with the hands. Reach your heart up off the earth. Tweeze your elbows back and towards your waist. And then as you exhale, make your way into a downward facing dog. On an inhale, bend your knees, look forward, exhale, walk or step to the top edge of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach your fingertips up toward the heavens. Exhale, chair pose. Inhale and chair pose. Exhale, left hand to the lower back, fold forward over chair legs, right arm squeeze powerfully back, gaze is powerfully to the left. Inhale, gaze comes back to center, lead with the right arm. Exhale, change sides. Inhale, rising into chair. Exhale, find a forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, step back into high plank. Inhale and high plank. Exhale, lower down to your belly. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. On an inhale, bend your knees. Look forward. Exhale, walk, step, or float to the top edge of your mat. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. One last time. Come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach your fingers up toward the heavens. Exhale, chair pose. Last chair of the practice. Inhale and chair. Exhale, right hand to the low back. Left hand sweeps powerfully out of the shoulder socket. Gaze powerfully to the left, right. Inhale, come back up into chair. Exhale, change sides. Inhale, rise into chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, step back into high plank. Inhale and high plank. Exhale, lower to your belly. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. In your down dog, taking a nice, deep, juicy breath, hold it at the top, sip in even more air. 
and then open your mouth, audibly sigh that breath out. <sighs> On an inhale, lift your right heel up toward the stars. Toe facing down toward the earth, closed hip. Inhale right here. Exhale, step your right leg forward, warrior one. Maybe replacing right hand with right foot. All right, so I like the legs that engage. So first, ground down into all four corners of your right foot in the pinky edge blade and heel of your left foot as if you were tearing your mat in two. And then you can take any arm variation. So three options that I can think of. Hands could be in that front thigh. They could be a heart center or your fingers can reach for the stars. So those are all options. You can maintain that. This is just an invitation. Go post the arms out to the side, make little fists. On an inhale, lift your gaze up toward the stars. Draw your shoulder blades closed like you were trying to pick up a broomstick between them. So open your heart. Exhale, hands, wrists, forearms, elbows come together. Release your chin to your chest, round through your shoulders. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, round through your shoulders. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, round through your shoulders. Inhale, come back into goalpost arms. And then as you exhale, release your hands down to the mat. Step your right leg back to meet your left, high plank. From high plank, you have many choices, but two of those are you can press directly into down dog, or you can flow through your own vinyasa, going from a high plank to halfway down low plank. Inhaling into any heart opener. I'm going to choose up dog here floating my shoulders over my wrist, pressing the shoelace parts of my feet into the earth. Exhale, downward facing dog. On an inhale, lift your left heel up toward the heavens. Exhale, step it forward, rise into warrior one. So friends, just like I said on the other side, we start in each standing pose from the feet and work up. So ground down into the feet, feel the quads of both legs engaged. Arm variation of your choice. Invitation only, go post the arms out to the side. Inhale, lift your gaze, open your heart. Exhale, round through your shoulders. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, round through your shoulders. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, round through your shoulders. Inhale, come back into goalpost arms. Exhale, release your hands down to the earth and down dog or your own vinyasa. And I'm actually gonna change my alignment just for demonstration purposes. You hold what you got. So on an inhale, lift your right leg up toward the stars. Exhale, step it forward gently. Tap your left knee down, low lunge, Anjani Asana. So a couple options, that back leg, you can tuck the toes on that left foot. You could also press the shoelace part of the foot down into the earth, but engage that left glute. An option to release the hips any amount closer down toward that right heel. Now it's not under load, I'm not super concerned, but if you notice that right knee is coming way forward to that right ankle, take a moment, walk that right foot a little further forward. Good. Now you could stay right here the whole time. Option to feed your right arm across the front plane of your body, catching the right wrist in your left hand. And then use that left hand to draw the fingers of your right hand further to the left. Do kind of a tractional stretch, probably primarily on the outside of that right shoulder. Release that right arm back down to your waist. Release your left hand down to the mat. Or to a block, right hand on your right thigh. Inhale, find full length along your spinal column. Exhale, press into your right hand, open your heart up to the right. Gently rotate your hips back to the left. And you could stay right here, but try this, especially if you have chronic low back pain. Each inhale, relax with the right arm, come slightly out of the twist. Exhale, re-engage, press into the right hand, deeper into the twist. And if that cycling feels good, continue through that to the cadence of your own breath. All right, the transition tends to be a little difficult for people. So I just want to give you a preview and let you know from here, we're going to transition to a modified high plank. 
I also want to tell you that what I'm most interested in out of the next pose has very little to do with the high plank and much more to do with that top leg. So we'll do it on this side and I'll tell you what I'm looking for on the other side. All right, come back to stillness, release your left hand down to the mat. So the typical traditional teaching is left hand under left shoulder. Instead, take that left hand two or three inches forward and step that whole right hip back. Notice how I sickle that left leg back behind me for stability. And then imaginary wall behind the back of your heart, press your head and shoulders into that wall. Invitation to lift the fingers of that right hand up toward the stars and guide the hips about another three inches up toward the heavens. Now, if that right leg is important for balance, you're home, stay right here. If it's not, press firmly through the heel of the right foot. Can't the toes down to face the horizon or below, so maybe down toward the earth. And then on an inhale breath, lift that right leg. It might lift a little, it might lift a lot. Either way is okay. I have no interest in how high it lifts. Exhale, release the right leg to the earth. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, release it down to the earth. Inhale, lead with the heel, lift the right leg, cant the toes down toward the horizon and breathe. We'll hold for six, five, four, three, two, one, release your right foot, right knee, right hand down to the earth, modified high plank, and then either press directly into downward facing dog, or you can flow through a vinyasa. You guys hold what you got. I'm just gonna change sides again to change the orientation for demonstration purposes only. On an inhale, lift your left leg up toward the heavens. Exhale, step the left leg forward, tap the right knee down, Anjani Asana, low lunge. Now I forgot to mention this on the other side, but if that's tweaky on your knee, if it feels bad sitting on the mat, put some padding under there or even fold your mat in two. But right glute is engaged, whole right leg presses into the earth. Option to release your hips down toward that left heel any amount more. And just like the other side, you can stay right here or feed that left arm across the front plane of your body. Catch the left wrist in your right hand and guide the fingers of your left hand further over to the right. Start to release your left hand down by your waist. Bring your right hand down to the mat or to a block, left hand on your left thigh. Inhale, find length along your spinal column. Exhale, press into your left hand, open your heart up to the left and stay right here or find that gentle cycling action that I introduced on the other side. All right, so why in this modified high pl side plank rather, am I more interested in the top leg than the side plank? Um, a part of the hip complex, one muscle in particular called the glute medius, um, when it's weak, it causes lots of problems. It's a contributor sometimes to lower back pain, could be one contributor, but it also contributes to hip pain, to knee pain. I'll tell you in another practice, some other things weak glute meds do. Right, and so this action of the hip abduction with the toes canted down toward the earth is the best way yet that I found to really isolate those muscles. All right, come back to stillness, release your right hand down to the mat. Now you, you may know what already fits. For me, it's three inches forward to that right shoulder. Step the left hip back, imaginary wall back behind the head and shoulders. And then if you don't need that left leg for balance, press through the heel, cant the toes down to face the earth, on an inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, lower the left leg down. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lead with the heel, lift the left leg, continue to breathe, cant the toes down to the earth for six, five, four, three, two, one, release left foot, left knee, left hand modified, high plank. And then however you wanna get there, lower yourself down onto your belly into any resting position. If you choose on the way down, take one of your blankets and fold it out in such a way 
maybe that a half folded blanket, the long edge of a half folded blanket is perpendicular to the long edge of your mat. And then anything, you could do belly shavasana, your hands down by your waist, one cheek resting on the earth. You could do a half frog, arms go posted to the side, the knee lifted toward the elbow on the same side that the chin is turned, anything that feels good in healing. So that ujjayi breath that served us so well the first half of the practice. If you chose to keep that up, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't hurt anything. And it's also not necessary. A comfortable natural breath is fine. Although at a high enough level of sensation, you may find two things. One, the, the ujjayi is a nice focal point for your attention. And two, I tend to find when life gets hard on and off the mat, my kind of unconscious response at this point is to engage the breath more, which I think, by the way, is a healthy instinct. So if that happens to you, I think this is good news. All right, so start to bring your hands under your shoulders. Lift yourself up into tabletop. And I would love for you to have your bolster in one block within reach. Now, you may not choose to use either but I'd like you to have them. Now start out in a regular tabletop shape and we're gonna go into Anahatanas in a puppy dog pose. And I'll give you an option uh, about a minute in for a twisted version that also gets into the shoulders. So it's sort of if puppy dog and broken wing had a baby, right? So to start, walk your hands, maybe three handprints forward, take the hands out wide, turn the fingers out. And the goal is hips will stay floating over the knees, but lower your heart, and your face down toward the earth. Now, right away, check in. And if you're getting like a pinching sensation in the shoulders, that's not good. That's not one that we want to tolerate. So just place a block under your heart and give you, or your bolster, give yourself a little bit of support. You have a right to your actions, but not to the fruits of your actions. Friends, check in with your body. You could stay right here. This is meaningful work the whole time. Lengthening it out the front plane of the body, a little compression, maybe gentle, maybe more than gentle in the low back. But if you'd like to add a twist, start pressing into the heel of your left hand, creating a generous space under that left elbow. Thread your right arm under your left palm face in the sky. Come down onto that right shoulder and the right side of your face. Now, right away before you do anything else, create a little bit more space and length between your right ear and your right shoulder. Now that left hand, it can stay under your left shoulder the whole time. You could come up on to cupcake fingers. Like your left hand was protecting the most precious cupcake ever. Or you could take a half line, wrap that left arm under your back. The one other option to add sensation, to me all in in this shape is if you straighten that right leg, come up onto the ball of that right foot. But be skillful in the level of sensation you choose. We're looking ideally for something that's between discomfort and pain. So I want you to definitely feel something and get sensation in this shape, but I don't want it to be painful. I'd like it to be sustainable. So I was in... Um, I was in a relationship once where everything I said, um, whatever the intention was, whatever I said came across to this other person poorly, like really poorly. And at the time, that was the only person in my life with whom I was aware that my words were having that kind of impact. So I did a bunch of things, right? So first of all, John Gray's Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. I read that book three times in the same year. I went to therapy to work on my communication skills. I tried all kinds of things, right? But then I was listening to this podcast, right? Take your left hand under your left shoulder, or actually take it out in front again. Press into that left hand, lift the left elbow. We're going to change sides. So start pressing into the right hand. And if you chose this twist, thread your left arm under your right, come down onto that left shoulder. 
And then all those options you had on that other side, you have all those options here too. Right, but then I listened to this podcast and the podcaster said, one of the things that she said that really impacted me, she said, we have 100% responsibility for our intention when we say or do something but zero responsibility for how the other person receives it, right? So before I get deeper into that, it reminded me Arjuna's wisdom, or sorry, Krishna's wisdom to Arjuna kind of reminds me of this. What he was saying, I think includes this, but it's much bigger than this. So I do think we have to be careful because sometimes there's a difference between intention and impact. And we can have a really pure intention and an awful impact. And if that's the case, we need to take responsibility and fix it, avoid it in the future, and make it right if we can. But I also think, particularly if there's one person in your life for whom this is the case, everything you say comes across the wrong way. And you've looked at both intention, impact, and you've analyzed this. It may not be you at all. It's possible in some cases um, that this person is perceiving what you're saying through the lens of their life and their experiences. Right, we have no control over that. So I'm not saying be dismissive of somebody's feelings, but I'm saying be careful on what level you're willing to compromise being yourself. Right, right hand under your right shoulder, left knee back down, lift yourself back up into tabletop. And from here, two options. The first is koi, which will be a restorative fish pose. And the second will be heart bench. Now I'm gonna choose heart bench, but if you choose Restore the fish, take a bolster, lay it out so that the long edge of the bolster is parallel to the long edge of your mat, which will also be, by the way, parallel to your spine. In one folded blanket on top of the bolster, somewhere in the, lot, the top third. And then come down onto your back. And the bottom of that bolster will be right at the bottom of the rib case, so bra strap level. And then release the weight of your body down. Now, Bound angle butterfly legs are an option. Soles of the feet are an option, as are lengthening the legs. But I recommend for purposes of what we're working on today, arms out nice and wide. So this is one option. It's not going to be the one that I choose. So I'm going to choose heart bench, which will involve one or possibly two blocks. So the first block at the medium height is going to replace the bolster. And then a second block, for me at the highest setting, four or five inches behind that other block. And that lower block, same landmark, bra strap level, lower the weight of your body down. And then the second block is sort of a pillow to cradle the head, right? All those options with your legs, you have those options here too. But regardless, whether you choose a bolster or a block, what I'd hope that you would feel for here Notice the resistance of the block or the bolster pressing up between your shoulder blades. And notice the sense of gravity drawing your shoulder blades down on either side of the support. And as your shoulder blades draw down toward the earth, feel for an opening on the front plane of the body, an opening of your heart. Um, I listened to another podcast. I probably listened to this conversation seven or eight times, but it's between Elizabeth Gilbert, who, if you're not familiar, she wrote, among many other things, Eat, Pray, Love, and our own Houston-based um, PhD social worker, Dr. Brene Brown, whose work on shame and vulnerability changed my life and the lives of many other people. And they were having sort of a conversation about inspiration and listening to what Mary Oliver would call that still small voice that you slowly recognize of our own and walking our own path. You have a right to your actions, but not to the fruits of your actions. So when inspiration strikes, we are called to leap and it's a choice. It's a choice, right? We can choose not to leap, but there's definitely a consequence. And I think one, we miss out on our destiny. And two, over time for most people, I think they make, it makes them sick. It makes us sick. 
But just because inspiration has called upon us to leap doesn't mean that inspiration of the universe or the divine otherness of the world will have a safety net cast to catch us out. Sometimes we fall to the earth. Right? As Brene Brown says, we don't leap for the landing. We leap for the sensation of flying through the air. So I don't know a super graceful way out of this, but I know from a body mechanical standpoint, a safe way. And the safest way that I know is to gently roll off onto the side and then slide your props out of the way. And then I would like for you to come onto your right side with your right forearm parallel with the top edge of your mat. And use this as sort of a, a forearm side plank, right? So for now, right shoulder floats over the right elbow, right leg is long, left leg is on top of it. Now check this out. Step that left leg forward. And start to slump down into that right shoulder, maybe even folding the right ear down toward the right shoulder. And feel for length and space opening up on the right rib cage. So all the way from the waist up to the right armpit. And that left hand, you can keep it on the leg. It can go in front of your torso. It'll be in front of the torso in a moment anyway. Or a teaser for where we're going. You can just drop that left hand behind your lower back. But basically, honor your own body's wisdom, friends. I have no preference. Right, so during this conversation, Elizabeth Gilbert and Brene Brown are talking about um, this bumper sticker. You've probably seen it before, um, but they'd certainly seen it, and it makes them crazy. Neither one of them cares for it. And it says... What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Right, so why would that make them crazy? That sounds super positive, like really empowering, right? Well, what both Elizabeth and Brene said in this conversation is if they could change that bumper sticker, it would read, what would you do that's so important to you that you would do it even if you knew you were going to fail? You are responsible for your actions and not for the fruits of your actions. Do not be concerned about success or failure. That's paraphrased, that's not a quote. All right, friends. Take that left hand, bring it in front of the torso. It's just a little bit of support. Press down into that left hand until you can slide that right forearm forward. Come down onto the right shoulder. That left hand takes a handful of ribs on the left rib cage. Start folding that left shoulder back toward the earth behind you. Now, if you're really mobile in your torso and your shoulders, that left shoulder may fall all the way down to the earth, in which case it might feel good to lengthen that left arm more. But my left shoulder is probably four to six inches elevated up off the earth. So first of all, either way, that's okay. But because it's elevated like that, it's much more comfortable and sustainable for me to keep my left hand right there at my left rib cage. When we get to the other side, I'm going to talk about one soft tissue potential cause for lower back pain, right? And there's a lot of them. There are a lot of them, but I'll talk about one. One that I think is really common that I'm not going to address today is the psoas. I will tell you an over-engaged psoas, a deep, deep ropey hip flexor, um, certainly can play a role um, in chronic lower back pain. But I've got a SOAS class that's, um, that's also in this on-demand collection. So I'd encourage you to, to check that out. I'll talk at length about both the physicality of the SOAS, um, but also the emotional side of the SOAS. All right, so if you've lengthened that left arm long behind you, bring it back, grab a handful of ribs on your left rib cage, and then start folding that left shoulder up so it's over your right. Step your left leg back to meet your right. And then use good body mechanics. So you could just extend your arms over your head, but roll to the other side. I'm going to completely change sides just for demonstration purposes, so I'm facing you. But for you, left forearm parallel with the top edge of your mat, legs extended long. 
Right leg floating over your left for now. Step that right foot forward. Slump down into that left shoulder, even folding left ear to left shoulder. So another culprit that's really common, another potential source of low back pain are these small sort of triangular shaped muscles on either side of the lower back called quadratus lamborum or QL for short. And what sometimes happens is one of those QL muscles is more tightly engaged than the other. So they're asymmetrical, right? And the body tends not to like that for, for this particular muscle. And, um, and so it'll tighten up, it'll get firing, it'll talk to you. And it's, the pain can be almost dehabilitating. So really any kind of side bending action helps to lengthen out and stretch that QL muscle. Um, so if you think about this action here, if you visualize your left rib cage as a big top canopy folding down between the wooden support struts, we're stretching out, um, probably getting a little into the inferior capsule, um, but certainly serratus anterior and QL I'm really feeling from here. And then the second action in this particular pose, check it where you feel the twisting sensation, but I feel it on the sides of the low back, right in the area of the QL muscle, twisting in one direction on one side and the opposite direction on the other side. If it, for me, it feels really good. So the other thing that I do as part of my self-care ritual is I have a stability band. And so I do like a, um, a side stretch on, on the stability ball every day. I think I said stability band, but I meant ball. Right hand comes in front of your waist, apply enough pressure, slide that left forearm forward, release the back of your head down to the mat. Right hand grabs a handful of ribs on the right rib cage, start to fold that right shoulder back behind you. And see if you can see what I mean about those muscles on the lower back being sort of twisted in the opposite direction. That's what it feels like in my body anyway. Your experience may be different. Of course, friends, we don't live in the same body and that's, that's fine, no worries there. I share my experience because it, it may be meaningful, but if it's different than yours, um, what's more important in your life is your experience. So I went through a period of three or four years where my QL muscle had me in and out of chiropractor's office and I couldn't imagine what was going on. But at the same time, I was also a state park police officer. So I spent 45 to 50 hours a week, sometimes more wearing a duty belt where one side had all of my tactical tools, it was really heavy. And the other side had administrative tools relative to that other, the right side, the left side was really light, right? So probably no wonder that almost had to have been a contributor um, to the QL wolves. Now, most of us are not police officers, that, that's okay. But you may have something in your life that adds that a similar um, degree of asymmetry. Just something to think about and look out for in your life. Right, bring your right hand back to your rib cage. Start lifting your right shoulder back up over your left. Step your right leg back over your left. And from there, friends, make your way into any final resting shape. Now, I, don't, I will tell you, I can't relax my shoulders in a conventional acute Shavasana. Um, the good news is it doesn't have to look like Shavasana. Find any position on your seat, your belly, your back, or your side that allows you to balance the two attributes of relaxation and alertness. So for me today, that's gonna look like a restorative bridge with two blocks at the lowest setting stack, one on top of the other, in both hands on the bottom of my rib cage. But you choose the one that's right for you. And if you've held on to any sense of that Ujjayi or victorious breath with which we started, you can release that now. Go ahead and let that go. Great job maintaining it. Come back to a comfortable natural breath.
what your body is calling for is more stillness. Please know, friends, you can ignore all of the rest of my cues, up to including closing this class in your final resting shape. All you have to do is make that decision and then ignore the cues. You also have the option to begin to make some small movements, including some deeper breaths. And bring your hands together in front of your face. Rub the palms of your hands together to warm them, to generate some heat. And cup your palms over your eyes. Start your circle and radiate outward, massaging your whole face and neck, especially the neck. And if your body would like one more full body stretch, take the time, give yourself, give your body what it needs. And then roll over onto either side into a fetal position. Take a couple of moments, maybe up to four breaths. And just check in, notice how your body's feeling. In particular, the area around your spinal column. Just notice if you've been able to create some space for yourself with the work that we did together. Notice too, what's the quality of your emotional state now? What's the quality of your mental state? And if all of those feelings are good compared to what we started, our duty becomes to take that good feeling and spread it throughout the world. Press yourself up into a seated position with your legs crossed, eyes open or closed. You can do anything that you like with your hands. Thank you, friends, for joining me today. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. And may you, may you know peace. Invitation to draw your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows, the Ajna Chakra. Blessings to you and your family. And that concludes our practice for today.